startups to grow in China, which is really interesting because this is a um, tasty market with full of uh, struggles. So tell us more. Hey guys, thanks for having the opportunity to be here. Um, quite a lot of uh, Chinese friends, Yo Duo, Zhongguo, Pangyongman, and JVR. Um, I try to make this a little bit more interactive as there are so many people here from China uh, basically going to talk about uh, what we are doing, what we are seeing, and what myself uh, experienced here setting up a company and, and working with several uh, startup teams. Um, I will just talk a little bit about what we are doing. Uh, our company is called uh, Angel Hack. Uh, we are based in San Francisco, headquartered there, started 2011, starting uh, from grassroots initiatives, running hackathons, then scaled all around the world, uh, having run uh, hackathons in more than 60 countries. And uh, last year, we decided uh, to go in on China as a, we also have an accelerator uh, program. Um, and uh, a lot of our portfolio companies are uh, obviously interested to come to China. So why do companies want to come to China? Um, I don't want to bore our Chinese friends here with the statistics, uh, but I still think it's, it's great uh, to look at the numbers. Uh, for example, here the, uh, we have the GDP uh, by PPP, purchasing power parity. Um, ba basically, uh, what is interesting to see here is um, by the year 2024, uh, Germany will be already overtaken uh, by I Indonesia. Um, and if you compare it now, I hope many of you guys had the chance to visit Bali or other beautiful places in Indonesia. You wouldn't actually think that if you compare the countries. Uh, my own personal background, uh, I grew up in Germany uh, with 19, moved to the States, uh, worked there about four, four years, five years, and uh, now spend a bit of time in China and around Asia. Um, continuing, it's also about the internet penetration. We uh, heard earlier on the panel uh, people speaking about AI, which uh, obviously is uh, quite exciting, but then a lot of European people um, and are, are struggling uh, because uh, they are worried about the uh, data sets, about uh, privacy laws and so on. Um, so number one, uh, here's still massive growth for uh, user penetration, um, as well as uh, uh, China, Asia in general, already has so many people online. Um, something is quite surprising, especially for Germans, because Germany is rather old school. Uh, China has a 98% penetration of all internet users are mobile. Um, you guys know, I mean, China's a mobile first market, so skipping, skipping the details here. Um, back in the day when I lived in the States, I talked to people, I was interested in China. I knew it's an exciting market, it's a manufacturing hub is what I had in mind, right? Uh, but back I, in 2009, 2010, when I first started looking into China, um, people were talking about like, hey, it's fake products, it's fake iPhones. On my first visit, I briefly moved to Shenzhen. I was so shocked to literally see a fake Apple store. I thought that that couldn't be real, that there's a fake Apple store. Um, who of you guys has been to a fake Apple store before? I, I bet there must be more. Yeah, I, now things are changing so fast, it's crazy. But what I think is sad and why I think um, it, it's great to have uh, forums, conferences like this, uh, to have a more open exchange and also have media tell the story internationally. Um, unfortunately abroad, uh, especially in Europe, I think uh, a lot of people still have this old fake China, copycat China model in their mind. Uh, but as you guys know, uh, China has evolved so rapidly, um, industrializing, going through uh, robots, as we just heard from, from Chris, uh, Christian um, or Christian. Um, people here obviously know all about Mobike. People abroad also know about it. Um, I mean, seeing them on the street, seeing them on the sidewalk, walks everywhere. And then obviously, um, every time I show somebody abroad WeChat, they're amazed. When, when foreigners come here, I think WeChat is not available in all functions, but um, I'm, I'm not sure what the criteria is. Um, I guess once, no idea. I know some foreigners, they cannot access all WeChat functions. I think I have access to most. Um, so it's, it's massive, right? Tomorrow morning, I'm going to Hangzhou, and it's so convenient, a uh, super app. You guys can be so happy to have all in WeChat because um, if I'm in Germany, I need to download Deutsche Bank, uh, Deutsche Bahn, but I'm rarely in Germany, so why would I carry that app on my phone, right? And I don't want to go to the website. It's so marfan, it's so annoying. Um, so I really appreciate that. Um, and I think China's uh, WeChat Tencent is doing a fantastic job there. 
Uh, but of course, it's not easy. Um, I, I would also love to hear more from foreign founders, like their, their stories, what went wrong, what, what didn't go wrong. Um, I really like the photo of, of the uh, uh, Google, uh, Google um, when people dropped flowers uh, after Google uh, uh, dropped their search engine, right? And um, certainly many of you guys will remember the cheap, uh, cheap uh, Uber and DD rides when they were battling. Um, Uber reportedly lost more than a billion US dollars per year, which is a massive amount if you think about it. And uh, DD is same, I mean DD is still losing massive amounts uh, with a lot less mo uh, competition, you would think it's different. Um, but especially back then, I remember it was so cheap to, to take an uh, Uber or Didi. There were these promotions all the time, like 2016. Um, you became really too lazy to walk, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but on the, on the flip side, actually, um, if you see the slide, you, you, might, you might think, oh, it's, it's so sad, it's so difficult. But then if you think about it, um, Google actually still does a lot of business here, right? Obviously, there's uh, uh, outbound um, advertisement going on. Um, and uh, in my opinion, Uber struck a quite lucrative deal uh, with, with Didi, uh, probably um, best, a pretty good case scenario for both parties, I would say. And same with Amazon. Um, I think it was just very recently in, in April when Amazon announced they're leaving like their, their uh, core business, um, their domestic business. Um, but then if you think about it, having such a small market penetration versus JD and Alibaba, I think it makes total sense. Um, but let's get back to uh, startup side. Um, for me, it was one of the key things. Um, I only studied Chinese for three months professionally in school. Uh, the rest I learned on the streets, I say. Um, uh, it, 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 it's just so difficult to make your way around, right? So we are we are a small startup too, and um, we cannot pay for like legal advice, legal service for everything. So it it took me ages to go through all the documents. By now, I'm uh, our company is registered in Chongguanzun, and um, I obtained an entrepreneurship visa there. Uh, but it was extremely difficult to go through all the paperwork, um, uh, talk with all the players until you understand everything. Also, until the company is registered. Um, one thing. Um, how many Germans are here, by the way? May I have a show of hands? There are a few. Okay, so you guys know the word uh, Fettnäpfchen. I think there's a, the English translation is a little bit weird. Basically, it's uh, to put it simple, it's to do something that you really shouldn't do. You might offend people or piss them off. What happened to me was I made a huge mistake. So look at the first photo. Maybe some of you can guess. On my first sales deck, that I presented to Chinese companies, I showed a Chinese flag without showing Taiwan. So there are a few small things that people should be really sensitive about, um, especially working uh, um, well with certain companies. Um, I didn't mean anything negative with that. Um, there was actually no intention behind it at all. It was for us, we separated, for us Taiwan as a company was supposed to be taken care of out of the APEC structure. And this was the mainland China. But there were so many people who literally sent me messages when they see our sales pitch, our deck, who messaged and said, this is certainly not acceptable that Taiwan is not part of China here. But anyway, besides that, uh, talking about diversity, um, if you see the second photo, maybe you wouldn't think uh, it looks uh, quite uh, exotic. I hope you guys can see it well. Um, it's in part of China. It's called Xinjiang. Um, uh, but people riding camels, so like if you compare it to the last photo, Shanghai, um, it's so different. And in terms of startups, I think now as markets are so penetrated, I think it's really interesting to look into like niche opportunities. Um, you see in the third uh, uh, s uh, photo, basically the um, uh, China's uh, division in, in, into also the minorities and also the regions. Um, different regions have different needs. It might be uh, they have a totally different need in terms of food. Uh, maybe they have different uh, needs in terms of uh, security. For example, uh, the mountainous regions, right? They're uh, like Sichuan, there was the earthquake, right? Uh, we are working, one of our uh, friend startups, um, they are working on disaster relief programs uh, together with IBM in partnership. 
So for them, uh, the mountainous regions might be extremely interesting or some coastal lines. Um, I Because I think China is an extremely difficult market to crack, as we also seen before. Uh, Google, uh, Uber, Amazon, and so on having s seemingly failures, right? So I think it really makes sense to to not only look into the huge market opportunities, but also consider like niche areas. A little bit more about us. Um, again, I introduced briefly what we do. Um, we built quite a big community of uh, developers, uh, designers, entrepreneurs all around the world. Um, in the last couple of years since we started our accelerator, uh, we helped uh, over 150 startups uh, uh, to be created. Uh, we've had several successful exits, uh, including to Google and other large players. Um, and um, for me personally, it's extremely interesting to work with startup teams, work with founder teams, and that's what we are work, uh, focusing on right now. Um, Angel Hack has, and we call it Hack Accelerator because the startups we are accepting, they're coming straight out of hackathons. So um, hackathon might be a little bit strange concept. Heike Mala Song, like it's uh, not a marathon where you run around. It's uh, pretty much like a 48-hour coding competition or something uh, around that time frame. Um, so it's people, coders teaming up with entrepreneurs, designers, and creating a product within a very short time frame. So um, for us, it's really cool to see because we are starting at the very, very, very crossroad, and obviously the survival rates of the startups from hackathons is not huge if there's no proper support. However, for example, from the just from the batch last year, uh, we had uh, 15 startups pitching last year at our um, Hack Accelerator Demo Day in San Francisco. Um, and uh, several of the startups went on to raise raise funds. And um, um, with two of them, we are in talks right now with Chinese investors, with Chinese accelerators um, to land here. And one we already successfully placed with a hardware accelerator uh, based out of Hong Kong, Shenzhen region. So this is something that we are working on right now. And um, um, if you are any investors, accelerators in the room, which I know there are many, feel free to find me later. Love to exchange details. Um, what I think would really, really help foreign startups for if there would be like proper databases, um, and maybe that's some, something Equal Ocean can take on, um, like a database listing all the, the investors and the fields, all the accelerators. Um, because if you come here, I mean, I'm making my own databases, but I know there must be like, I mean, I'm ca just sc scratching the surface. Probably the companies and people I have in my database is probably probably less than 1% of all the active people out here in the field. So yeah. Um, a couple things that I found very, very useful and what I, what I love to share with, with founders um, here, so many uh, Chinese, Chinese people in the room. Um, what I think uh, helped really a lot is to find strong um, and also suitable partners. Um, what I see is when foreign startups are coming here, you're being overrun by government agencies. Um, government agencies from all corners always want to attract you. And I, um, I hope I don't offend somebody here, but I have wasted quite a bit of time uh, at taking on uh, meetings. Um, so I think uh, it really makes sense to do your due diligence and talk to people like if some government player approaches you, ask them like, hey, who do you work with before? Do you have some reference? I think this is something really, really useful. Um, Beside that, um, we've seen from a couple like really successful uh, startups coming here. For example, uh, LinkedIn. They started out with a, a, a Chinese leadership team. And uh, I think if you start with a strong Chinese GM, or I mean, it can be also, how do you call them? Um, a friend told me there's a concept of the banana and the egg. The egg is the Western person, is white outside, but yellow inside. So. Uh, <laughs> I hope you guys could understand. Um, it could be also somebody, f some foreigner who has been here 20 years and really understands the language and the culture and the people, right? But uh, generally speaking, this is the rare case. I think it really makes sense um, to have a Chinese person leading the operation. Uh, I'm right now the uh, far and the legal representative of our company here and, and the GM or whatever you call it. However, I love to replace myself um, as I think somebody Chinese is a lot more suitable also navigating the whole s landscape. Um, beside that, um, I've seen a lot of companies uh, achieve great things following the five-year plan. Um, basically, a five-year plan f uh, gives a view into the future. Um, 
the central government determines uh, what the direction is and then it trickles down and I think if you're following these uh, guidelines uh, you're probably doing quite a few things right. Next thing is the concept of Guangxi. I think everybody heard about it, we don't need to talk about it. A um, couple people when they come to China they try to totally alter their product but I really believe in uh, offering like authentic value. So if you bring for example we bring in a multinational background, right? We're not the 100% experts on China. We try to become better every day. However, um, we say one of our strengths is also the ties to Silicon Valley and a, a strong network and, and uh, investor uh, ecosystem over there. Um, beside that, uh, people should really learn to adapt. Uh, 996, Chiu Chiu Liu, everybody heard about it. Um, Chinese people work super hard. My first job here actually was, in when, I, when I started working in China, my first job was for a company called uh, Luo Xinxie. Uh, it's na Naked Hub, uh, the co-working space. We successfully exited to WeWork uh, for $400 million, which was uh, quite exciting to be part of that journey. Um, but there in, in the Beijing office, I was the only foreigner, and that was really exciting to see. Um, during Chinese New Year, I sat down and I wrote a LinkedIn article um, about Naked Hub because so many people didn't, still didn't know what co-working was. Uh, on the weekend, of course, I did sales partnerships, so of course customers call you up, like there is just no weekend. And I think if, if you think uh, German working hours and, and uh, like traditional sense, not startups, and, and want to go home at 4.30 or 5 or leave Friday at 1 o'clock, I think it's really hard to succeed here, even though I'm a big fan of work-life balance. Um, and then adopting, right? Um, it continues about being flexible. Um, I, I work with a couple people who help startups also adopt their local UI UX. I think it's really, really relevant because uh, tastes uh, are quite different uh, or also customs. So it makes sense to if you're in the app business to overhaul it. And um, yeah, besides that, obviously the language, uh, the language and tone I think uh, mostly um, is about marketing message. Uh, if, if you uh, get a great marketing message, it can go viral here and then everybody talks about it, pretty much giving you free advertisement. And if needed, uh, adjust your business model. Don't shy away. Chinese people are so open to try new things. Also something I really appreciate and love about China. Um, in Germany, everything is, seems to be more stagnant and traditional. Here you see some uh, AI with her phone trying some weird apps that you never heard about. So I'm always amazed by that. Thank you guys very much and love to chat with some of you later. Thank you.